Now let's take a look at what real numbers are. Real numbers are basically classified into two halves as rational numbers and irrational numbers. So any real number can either be rational or irrational. This is what you have learned in class 9th as well. So it's going to be kind of a recap here. Now how do we differentiate between rational and irrational number? There are many ways to do it. The first is that a rational number, any natural number, whole number, integer that you see is going to be a rational number. Whereas numbers like pi, e, all these numbers are going to be irrational. So you can identify just by having a look at them. The second way is by definition. The definition of rational numbers is any number that can be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 is a rational number. So you take any number in the form p by q, you reduce it, you cancel out the common factors if there are and if the resulting number is of the form p by q where p and q both are integers and q is not equal to 0 then that number is rational number and if you do not arrive at this form then that number becomes irrational. So there is no separate definition for irrational number any number that is not rational is actually called an irrational number. So you define the rational numbers you figure out whether a given number is rational or not if it is not then it has to be irrational if it is real. Now the third way is any number or that can be expressed in the form root n any any number that can be expressed in the form root n where n is a perfect square is a rational number for example root 4 root 9 root 16 root 25 all these numbers n the number within the square root is a perfect square and hence the resulting square root is going to be a rational number but if the number within the square root sign is not a perfect square then that number has to be an irrational number for example root 2 root 3 root 5 root 6 root 7 root 8 root 10 root 11 all these numbers are going to be irrational so we will be looking at how we can prove this but for now this is how this is the table that shows how, how do you differentiate between rational and irrational numbers so this is what you should take note of the third the fourth way is by decimal any number any real number will have its decimal representation so all terminating there are three kinds of decimals one is the terminating decimal the other is the non terminating recurring decimal repeating decimal and the third is the non terminating non recurring decimal so there are only three types of decimal representation for every real number any real number can be represented in its decimal form and of these all the terminating and non terminating recurring decimals are rational numbers whereas non terminating non recurring numbers are irrational numbers so this is these are the four ways in which you can differentiate between rational and irrational numbers at your level for decimals i said a bit earlier that there are three kinds of decimal representation of any real number the three uh, forms of decimal are terminating non-terminating recurring and non-terminating non-recurring. Of these two, terminating, what are terminating decimals? Any decimal which terminates be after a certain point after the decimal is said to be a terminating decimal. For example, 0.8 over here, it terminates after 8, right? There is no number after 8. So, it's called a terminating decimal. 0.171, it terminates after the last one. So, it's a terminating decimal. And all these numbers are going to be rational number because 0.8 as you can see it can be written as 8 by 10 which is of the form p by q where p and q both are integers and q is not equal to 0. Hence it is a rational number. Similarly 0.171 is 171 by 1000 which is of the form p by q integers and q is not equal to 0. Hence it is a rational number. Similarly 0.375 if you cancel out the common factors of 375 by 1000 you get it as 3 by 8 which again is a rational number because p and q 3 and 8 are both integers and q is not the denominator is not equal to 0. So any terminating decimal that you can see here it is going to be a rational number. What about the non-terminating non-recurring numbers? The, the numbers could be like uh, 0.31232. You don't know what the number after 2 is going to be. So there is a dot over there. So when you are not certain what the number is going to be, can you put, can you divide it by any number? In a, in a terminating decimal you always knew 
how many decimal places after uh, how, after how many places of the decimal does the number stop so you can divide it by 10 to the power that many uh, number but in a non terminating non recurring uh, decimal you do not know where the number would stop what would be the next number so it's not possible for you to put to divide it by a denominator and get a fractional representation fraction representation of the same so you cannot represent it as p by q and if you cannot represent it as p by q that means it cannot be a rational number and if it is not a rational number it has to be an irrational number and the third type that is the non terminating recurring which may at the outset look like an, an irrational number because a non terminating recurring number also does not end anywhere it goes on and on. So people might say that someone might ask you might confuse you and say that if it does not stop how can you divide it by any number you, you do not know what the number is going to be. So you cannot divide it and arrive at a, at, at a number of the form p by q. So how are you saying with certainty that p by q is going to be that a, a non terminating recurring number is going to be a, a, a rational number. So let us see how we prove that.